Right, I've bought a Kuwu lens warmer, or if I've got the box up the wrong way, then I've bought an Umuk lens warmer. Um, right, let's open it up and see what's inside. Get rid of the box. Get rid of the packaging. Right, so we've got the actual lens warmer that you wrap around the lens. A nice bit of Velcro on it. Nice long lead that is kind of got a woven covering. And then we've got the controller, so that obviously plugs into there. Right, and then we have got, let's get rid of that. Don't need that. This piece that's a controller and switch it on so you just got one two three settings um, I'd probably use it on the medium setting most of the time and um, that's it really pretty simple so this has only been on about 30 seconds and I can already feel the warmth coming through that so it's doing its job nicely well it should be able to power the lens warmer from just about any of these USB uh, rechargeable power packs and it should last uh, depending on what setting you've got probably anywhere from about three to ten hours something like that more than enough to get you through a night shooting and um, like obviously a three hour time lapse or something like that um, obviously you can get these in different capacities so the size of the uh, power pack will obviously have an effect on how long you can run the lens warmer for. Right let's put this onto a lens so obviously this is a 20mm f1.8G it's got a really wide um, focus ring so you can put that on there, oh, getting that the right way around, like that. So that's on there nice and tight, and you can put that wherever you want. So one thing you have to bear in mind, obviously when that's on there, the focus ring will still operate, and it still operates in um, autofocus as well. So you do need to be careful when you're using it not to knock this and I'd probably check my focus regularly uh, just to check that a quick tug on the cable hasn't adjusted my focus or something like that's happened. Right, so this is my 40mm F2 um, as you can see when I put that against the 20mm the focus ring is a little bit more than half the thickness of that on the 20 mil lens but um, let's get this out of the way the lens warmer gotta be a little bit more careful still goes on there nicely and actually because this is half on the focus ring and half on the lens it makes it a little bit harder to knock the focus on this obviously you need to make sure that that's back far enough that you're not going to see it in your photograph because this could encroach especially on a wide angle lens into your image one of the only limitations with the lens warmer is these Nikon Z kit lenses that extend um, they might be a little more trick or a little bit trickier to use obviously it still goes on there fine but if you wanted to change your focal range um, you'd probably struggle a bit more it does work but it's a bit more of a faff and you're probably unlikely to be using one of these lenses for astrophotography anyway in which case I wouldn't probably worry about it too much although you could 
make it work I imagine it's not something I've ever tried but yeah all right, obviously we've had a look at the lens warmer how to set it up how to fit it to your lens uh, let's discuss when you're going to need to use it so I live in the UK northern hemisphere and pretty much any time of year as long as there's moisture due on the grass um, there's a risk of it getting on to your lens and misting it up. Um, here's an example of it. This time lapse was ruined because I didn't realise my lens warmer I was using was broken. Uh, did a three hour time lapse, came back and the lens had been fogged up for the entirety of that time lapse. So, complete disaster. These things are only about £20 each. You've probably already got one of these power packs are laying around so just plug the two in and off you go and you won't have any more problems. Um, it seems to be a particular issue for me in the UK spring and autumn you just get to a point where there's just so much dampness and moisture in the air that it just like oh, you can feel it. You can see it on the ground first and then you can feel it, it starts to give it like a damp feeling to the tripod. The aluminium on the tripod seems to attract moisture. Um, I live near the coast so there's probably a lot more moisture in the air than I would have if I was in land a bit. Um, it doesn't have to be a particularly cold night, the worst nights for it are when it's like 10, 15 degrees, something like that. Sometimes in the winter when it's really cold there's no moisture in the air and it's not a problem at all. Likewise in the summer it's so hot there's no moisture in the air um, and again if there's a slight breeze in the air that's enough to keep the lens clean anyway. Um, but it's just £20 and it's a lifesaver so why wouldn't you have one in your camera bag for when you need it. I'm going to start here and take a photograph of this Trinity House monument thing. Uh, it's basically a greyish white and that's never a good thing at night uh, it just gets blown out with highlights especially when there is a great big lighthouse come on shine your light shining that light onto it so uh, that might be a bit hideous um, but we'll see how it works out in the uh, editing right I am set up with my Nikon Z5 20mm f1.8G I've got my lens warmer on there connected to a power bank that is taped to the tripod leg um, if it was a bit windier I'd probably tape the cable's a bit tidier as well. I always put the USB port mounting downwards so the water or any moisture isn't running into that. Obviously I would turn that up the other way as well but it's not raining, it's not damp tonight particularly so I'm not worried about that. Just as a side note once you've put the lens warmer on it's always worth checking you're still focused at infinity just because it's so easy to nudge when you're doing that. Uh, once you have got the lens warmer on obviously you can still focus in manual mode and the lens will still autofocus if you want to switch back into an autofocus mode. Right I found this little spot here, it's a massive rock, what I'm going to do is run up on top of that try and stand still for the length and exposure and get a Milky Way selfie. The Milky Way at the moment is directly above that rock so pardon me hopefully that should look good. This is Pulpit Rock. I was well I've taken a photo of it but unfortunately the top quarter of this rock is getting caught by light from the lighthouse and it's so bright that it's just blowing out the highlights so 
I'll try and edit it, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do very much with this. It's pretty awful. Right, let's wander back without falling off the cliff edge and see if we can uh, find some other shots. No misting up yet, so the lens warmer is doing its job. This is the one thing I wanted to film tonight, but when I got here, or photograph rather, but when I got here earlier, there were people fishing here. So there's three fishing boats here. And this old crane, which is used to lift the boats in and out of the water. So it'll be really good to get some light on this, get set up, catch the Milky Way behind it. So let's get going on that. Moving around a bit slowly at the moment because about 10 minutes earlier I slipped on a slope and my left ankle bent in a very funny way and I heard a little pop noise. So. Um, yeah, I have no idea what I've done to that, but we'll carry on regardless. But a trip to the emergency room tomorrow might be in order.